You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Yes, welcome back. My name is Rob. This is episode number eight. 33. Crazy to think that we're at 833. We appreciate you being with us, especially those of you. I think there's some of you that have been with us from probably day one, and that's pretty awesome. But even if it's your first one, thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about NDVI, uh, which actually, if you check out NASA's website and you look at NDVI Health Index, you can actually see, it's really weird, but on the east coast of the country over the last 20 years, more vegetation has been dying than growing, and it's actually the exact opposite on the West Coast. Very mm. interesting. Very, 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 very interesting data. What can NDVI tell you, and when do clients really use it? That's the good question. Talking about that today, uh, and so much more here on the show, and remember, if you have a question, just go to askdroneu.com, upload that question, and if you haven't become a member of the DroneU community, get access to 32 courses and a community that is there to inspire you, motivate you, and help you along the way. We're only adding courses, and as the industry progresses and recency tests become evident every two years, being a part of a community to keep you on top of the industry has never been more valuable than it is right now. Check it out, droneu.education. Yes, absolutely. And guys, before we get into the question, we want to talk to you a little bit about DynexDrones.com. They are a great opportunity for you if you're looking for a drone to either start your business or maybe enhance your business, maybe take it to the next level. They've got some great programs that can get you into a drone for zero down, believe it or not, and then make payments on that. So if you need that, if that'll help you get going, it might be worth checking them out at DynexDrones.com. They've got pretty much everything that you need. And if you use the discount code DRONEUSAVE, 25, the number 25, all uppercase. When you check out, they're going to give you $25 off of your order. Check them out, dynexdrones.com. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Kevin, from New Jersey. I had a question about NDVI data as it pertains to um, somewhat agriculture, but more in terms of golf course maintenance, turf maintenance. I was just talking to some friends of mine that are uh, working golf courses couple are superintendents, couple are head golf pros and stuff. And we were just talking about how comparing at some of the artifacts that we've seen online, the visual spectrum and the uh, NDVI data, from their standpoint, they've not seen the benefit of it. And I really couldn't see it either because a lot of the, the areas that the NDVI data can identify as problem areas, you can already see by visual inspection. Uh, I mean, and these guys who have been operating their golf courses for many years are are pretty good at looking at areas and and seeing what's being able to dry out and protect it ahead of time. They don't actually need to fly drone over, collect near infrared data, look at an index to tell them there's a problem or a pending problem. So I'm just trying to understand uh, if you know people out there that have really seen the benefits from it, like, you know, they've identified problems before they've happened in some industry. You can tell that an area is is stressed or dying before it's turning brown. Because it, a lot of these things we're looking at, you can already see areas going bare, don't need near-infrared data to, to tell you that, that something bad is happening. For these guys, a lot of what they think is, is a great tool for them is the, the ground samplers, or, you know, the devices that have the three prongs that go into the ground and actually measure moisture and, and various information about the soil with a probe not flying a drone around so if you've got any insight into that or you've got examples in your area maybe out west where you've seen the ndvi data really pay off in some applications whether it be agriculture or turf management on a golf course i'd love to hear about it thanks very cool thanks ken as always um coming in with a great question a detailed question and Ken's just always kind of thinking ahead a little bit, thinking things through and making sure that he's not doing things just for the sake of doing them, which I appreciate because he takes those questions out into the community, which is awesome. So 
It it actually is a great question, and uh, it does certainly make you wonder if this is a technology that is even that useful for uh, for golf course maintenance. Well, it seems like in areas where they're having difficult uh, golf course maintenance issues, you know, maybe a multispectral camera would be better than just NDVI mm. because multispectral is going to give you a lot more information than just a color gamut of you know, uh, uh, quote unquote, health density based off of reflectivity and absorbency of light. I mean, that's what NDVI is. It's essentially when plants are healthy, they reflect green light. And when plants are unhealthy, they reflect or they reflect a lot less light. I could have that backwards. I don't think so. But I'm, I'm, I know one thing for sure, and that, and that is the light reflected is different when a plant is healthy versus <laughs> non-healthy. Bottom line. But with multispectral cameras, what we can actually do is we can tell the camera, multispectral typically looks at, let's say, a couple different band lengths. Um, and every everything in the world has its own unique absorbency and reflectivity of light. And those are two values, typically measured in microns or nanometers. Now, that being said, you could actually say, okay, well, I want to see phosphorus content. I want to see if there is an outbreak of some sort of disease on this particular plant, because in Arkansas, they're using pyrethrin on their plants and it was banned. And I want to see if it's on my plants. Recently, there was a podcast and I want to say it was on Freakonomics. Uh, I think it was in Arkansas where they were using chemicals that had been banned because they were doing just horrible damage to other farmers, meaning a neighboring farm would, would spray this material mm -hmm. and the wind would carry said material to the neighboring farms, ruining their, their crops. Hmm. It got so bad that someone shot someone else over it. Um, anyway, long story short, a multispectral camera would be the perfect evidence that your neighbor has been spraying said chemical because the evidence won't lie because you can right. say, I know this chemical has an absorbency and a reflectivity of light at X. Hmm. Uh, and I'm going to look for just that. Multispectral provides an, a new level of detail that NDVI does not. In addition, NDVI is one of those things that it does not work unless you use a camera actually designed for NDVI. Drone deploys NDVI solution, PIX4D. Even if you go to a PIX4D with NDVI, they're going to tell you, don't use the simulated NDVI. Um, you want to use a real NDVI camera. And it's typically, I mean, you can even get an Inspire camera and they just remove the infrared filter and, you know, do this and do that, and voila, NDVI camera. It's really not that difficult. Now, a multispectral camera is a far cry from anything like that. A multispectral camera is going to run you a significant amount of money because it provides a significant amount of data. Uh, now, that being said, he said, you know, a lot of these golfers are not using NDVI because they can just spot, you right. know, bad grass, right? Like, oh, okay, I get it. It's bad grass. Mm hmm where are instances that I have seen where NDVI is being used? Um, really, two places. Uh, and it's all about water. It's not about water as far as health of plants. It's more of where is water going from and to. Now, obviously, you could get a lot of this information in, in a topographical map, but the USDA has contracts out for removing vegetation in areas. And I worked on something where we provided them with an NDVI report of where the water was moving from and to to showcase that water density was increased because vegetation had decreased thanks to the contract. Mm -hmm. So it was a permanent record of, well, not installation, but uh, uh, uninstallation of a bunch of trees, juniper trees, that were inhibiting the flow of water off the mountain into the water supply of Las Vegas, New Mexico. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that was one perfect example. Yeah. Um, that being said, I'm not really seeing it much on golf courses. Um, I've worked for some incredibly high-end golf courses. Uh, Dallas National is one of them. And, I mean, these greenskeepers, they make, I, I mean, <laughs> some of them make 150 grand a year. Like, it's crazy. Um, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, drones and everything. And, and when I mentioned, you know, drones and plant health and whatnot, for him, it was more about 
just kind of getting a, a recon on the entire area quickly. Exactly. Rather than, you know, detailed data. Right. So, for example, the idea of, of using the prong mechanisms, that I'm sure that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's going into the ground. It's mm-hmm. telling you how much moisture is there. But obviously, it's a much more labor-intensive process. Correct. So I think it's more about efficiency of information and how quickly you can gather it on a macro level that can be helpful to them. Mm-hmm versus some of the detailed data that they can get from walking around using the prongs or just using some of the old methods that they have that still work great. I mean, obviously, these are beautiful golf courses with beautiful grass, and they're using the old systems. So Mm -hmm. it works great. So it's more about just developing and utilizing new technology to create efficiencies that I think is probably there. Even if if they can get that information by walking around seeing a dead spot, it might make sense. It might behoove them to do something with drones to get the same information but quicker. Well, because right? well, time is money, right? So yeah. if, if they're working on a 27-hole golf course like Haynes Point in D.C., you know, getting around all that in every single morning to see what's going on, mm-hmm. probably kind of difficult. Particularly if you can just set it off on a mission, right? An automated mission to go, I would assume you can do that. So, I mean, okay, here's the, so the only other example I was going to say is that I know farmers using NDVI data um, to, again, just cover wide swaths of area Mm -hmm. um, because it's just so large. They can just do it so much faster with a drone. And they're doing exactly that. They process it with Pix4D into one giant ortho mosaic. Right. And that's it. And they have a picture of the whole property in a couple hours. They could never do that on foot. Well, particularly with vegetation on a farm or something, because it's obviously or typically growing kind of high, so they've got to get down into that, right? Which this will help them do, as opposed to grass, which is, you know, surface. True. Surface vegetation. So, true. Different applications would probably be um, more useful as far as this technology is concerned. But yeah, definitely. I could definitely see some benefits to using it on a golf course. But it definitely takes some time for an industry like golf course or any industry to adopt a technology that is fundamentally changing the way they go about doing what they do. So in that sense, um, it's not a surprise, but I would imagine in time it will become a a tool that's used more for golf courses, I would think. Again, larger golf courses, covering areas, efficiencies. When you're trying to figure out pricing of your, uh, your product, oftentimes you have to ask yourself, not only what value am I providing to the client, but how much money is the client saving? And how much money is it worth the client to pay me to still Mm -hmm. have savings? Sure. Because if I'm saving 30 grand a month and you charge five, you know, fantastic. Sign me up. If I'm saving 30 grand a month and you're charging 15, chances are you're still getting hired. Yeah. It's just how many cojones do you have to ask for the money? This goes back to... What do you believe your worth is? And not only what do you believe, but what do you, your clients believe? Because one thing I've been saying that and a lot of people are like, I believe in myself. <laughs> All right. That's great. Fantastic. But it also has to be physically possible. Right. Okay. So we can't lose sight of that. Uh, and it, and, it, and it's, just, it's just so critical. It's just so critical. And that's not always real easy to do because in the case of a golf course, for example, if we're talking about one or two guys kind of casing the golf course every morning or twice a week or however often they do it, you're talking about a person's job, full-time equivalent, we'll call it, and you're not necessarily going to get rid of that person because of doing this work with drones now. So maybe you could deploy them to do other things, and so there's that value there. But proving that kind of value is going to be difficult in some cases, and this might be one of those, specifically as we're talking about figuring out whether a golf course is healthy or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, It's not always straightforward. It's not. And I'm seeing more people doing, like with golf courses, I'm seeing more videography and mapping, and mapping is for the use of navigation, simulating mm-hmm. the holes so that they can have indoor um, you know, driving ranges and super expensive golf courses are mapping these golf courses so that they can have, you know, better, better data. And, right. and what that means is, so this is the project I worked on. So essentially, uh, you know, these new golf courses have radar arrays behind the, the tee boxes. And with our maps of each hole, they've simulated the holes. So if you're an old fart, and all you've been doing is focusing on your, your business and not relationships or 
caring about people. You know who I'm talking about. The really old farts who hit the golf ball and then ask someone else where it went. Come on. My dad's that guy, okay? <laughs> I, I, this is who I'm talking about right now, okay? That, those days are gone, all right? Because now you're going to pull up your phone and you're going to say, where did I hit my golf ball? And your phone is going to communicate with the radar machine and the map of the golf course and say, hey, Aho, your golf ball is, is dog right down 437 yards at a 13 degree angle. Well, it's just going to map it for you. Yeah. And give you a <laughs> yeah. turn left here. I mean, like, people don't get it, but drones are like a multi billion dollar business just in sports analytics. Yeah. If if people understood where that is. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of people are like, everyone says drones are going to be an $80 billion business by 2020. You could cover almost half of that in sports analytics alone. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the reports and the numbers, so I yeah, know you know what I'm talking no, about. No, I do. It's been a while since we've seen that. That was actually a very interesting report. But yeah, I can imagine how far it's come even since then. Yeah. They're actually taking a lot of that stuff to uh, to the market. Agreed. Cool Agreed. stuff. Yep. I hope that answers the question. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. Don't forget, the 107 recency test is coming up. And if you want some practice on questions, I post a new question on Instagram every single day. Just follow us on Instagram at the drone you. And if you click our story, you'll see the questions each day. So get your practice in. And if you are not ready for the recency test, good news. We're going to be coming out with a lot of information coming up on how to retake the test, what's involved, what you should expect, and so much more. I'm actually going to have early access to the test. So I'm going to go take the test before most people do. We're going to have nice. real world like here you go this is what it's like very cool and hopefully i'll pass <laughs> counting on if it. i don't pass i'm gonna sm rick james is gonna smack me <laughs> all right You'll anyway pass. that's that's gonna be it for us today i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show please share or review the show thank you 